Hey everyone, welcome back to my Iron Man Progress from Scratch series. So after the whirlwind last episode with all the quest progression, I've been enjoying the freedom of a little bit of relaxing skilling and... Wait, does anybody else hear that? Well, I guess I was just having too much fun. There comes a day in every Iron Man's life where they have to face the old gates of hell. But before we get locked into the uh, old Winter Todd grind, let's do a couple more quick little tasks on our way over there. So I've just done a quick little mini game teleport over to the fishing trawler to get to the other side of the map, and we're just gonna do the clock tower quest. No, not the clock tower quest, the Tower of Life quest, really quick. So that's what the uh, leather gloves, hammer, and saw and beer are for, and then a player owned house teleport to get back across the map later on. And the arrow shafts and feathers are just for a little bit of fletching XP while we're running around the map. Can you imagine? There was once a time when we had to read the wiki for each step of a quest, or even worse, work it out ourselves. What would we do without Runelight? And that's Tower of Life complete, so a little spot of construction and crafting XP there. The construction in particular will be a nice little boost for our Winter Todd grind for a bit more XP. Uh, now, this is where I've got the POH teleport, let's crack that bad boy open and run over to Port Sarim to get to... Zaya. Radio, we've made it over to Zaya. Now, since we're going to be running across half the map anyway to get to Winter Todd, let's start up Client Okarend and we'll knock off the Storekeeper quest points as we go along the map. Oh, and don't mind that still in Artifacts overlay. I think it's a leftover from my Rune Light when I was doing it on my main previously. And a one, and a. Ah, oh, crap, I took a wrong turn. So yeah, that's a little bit awkward. I wasn't really looking at my screen <laughs> while I was doing this quest and I took the southwest path from Arceus over to Lovikange just above the Karen Castle. Turns out if you go that way there are some robbers and highwaymen that will attempt to kill you and I didn't realise that and I wasn't looking at my screen. Anyway, blessing in the skies, we got this mime random event so let's do this and see what we get. So the main reason we are doing the Quizmaster event anyway is because there's an item called the Stale Baguette, which is a 1 in 256 chance to get from the mystery box from the Quizmaster. You can also get it from the Sandwich Lady, and so that's just a collection log item which I want to get one day, hopefully. And today is not that day. Onwards we go. So we just popped into the bank on our way into Shazian, and while we're here at Jennifer's store for the quest, we're also going to buy a pair of shears from her, and then pop back into the building to the west just to pick up the um, chef's hat, the orange die and the black wizard's hat, and then head back over to Hesidius to continue the quest. So we went back to Hesidius shop and did that part of the quest up to Veos, got the mysterious orb which we're now about to pop at the dark altar, and that's the quest pretty much complete, but before we can go back to that side of the map, there's something on this side of the map we have to do. You know it, I know it, I think we all know what's about to happen. Well, the time has come, the long slow walk our final moments of freedom before we officially become a Winter Todd locked Iron Man for the foreseeable future. Now I keep joking about this uh, Winter Todd from Hell grind that everybody does, but obviously there's a very good reason for it. Given this is a From Scratch series and there might be a lot of new players watching, let's dig into some of the reasons why we want to grind out Winter Todd early. First off, it gives us a lot of variety in multi-skilling XP, both directly and indirectly. From the direct training of the Winter Todd minigame, we can get wood cutting experience from cutting the logs, fletching XP from fletching the logs, fire making obviously from either burning the logs or the fletched uh, kindling, and construction XP from repairing the brazier or brazier. And on top of that, you get a whole bunch of other starting resources for skilling, such as gems for crafting, ores for smithing, herbs for herb lore, seeds for farming, and fish for cooking, and of course your starting food. You also get the chance at uniques including the Pyromancer outfit which gives 2.5% bonus fire making XP when training the skill, and the Tome of Fire, the Pet, the Broom of Torch, and also a chance at the Dragon Axe, although that's incredibly rare, even more so than the Pet. And that's our first kill down, can we fix it? Nice little Bob the Builder reference. In fact, let's test out the account's RNG, we'll open the first box before we start saving. Okay, that wasn't anything too great. Let's hope that's not a sign of RNG to come. We are the champion. Hell yeah. Actually, on that note, there have been quite a few combat achievement pop-ups, so let's take a quick look. Yep, so we've knocked out most of them. There's just a couple outstanding. 
I don't think we can do mummy because we haven't done druidic ritual. Cozy, we don't have the clothing and why fletch? I might do that if I can be bothered <laughs> at some point during this grind. 60 fire making. Oh, and 250 total too. 30 fletching. The gains are starting to add up. <clears throat> um, nothing to see here. So, uh, even Jagex is having a bit of a laugh at me. They've hit me with the Grave Digger event on my way back uh, to pick up my grave from that unfortunate death. Figured I might as well do it anyway. Let's see if we can get another piece of zombie outfit for the collection log. Uh, no such luck. But we got the emote though. Not too shabby. And that's 50 wood cutting. That's actually a really big one because now we can get magic logs from the supply crates. Coming up on another 10 fire making levels. That's 70. 40 fletching. And that's the big 100 winter Todd kills. Slowly getting there. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And that's 80. Another 10 down. <laughs> I'm a clown. God damn it. I had to change it up a bit because I was losing my mind. Started playing around with the uh, 117 HD plugin. I play on resizable sometimes when I'm doing certain skilling methods and that, but I've never really messed around with the HD plugin that much. It looks pretty good actually. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys use HD or do you use regular RuneScape client graphics? Let me know in the comments below. I just discovered you can actually use a HD client in fixed mode as well. Didn't know that. Although you can't really appreciate it as much, I guess, in the small little screen. The grind has made me start to miss levels. That's 30 construction, which is actually really good because we can put our house in Relica now, which is a useful little teleport to have. 50 fletching, another big tenor. I'm losing my mind. I forgot to record the 200th kill on this Winter Todd grind. Level 90. I don't know if I can take much more of this. I'm almost at my wits end. We keep going for a little bit longer at least until we get this 60 wood cutting and see how we feel. I don't know if I want to go all the way to 99 at the moment. Yep, I missed another milestone. 300 kills. I think I'm going to push through till 92 at least. Halfway to 99. 92. Ugh, every RuneScape player's official halfway mark. Oh, I need a break from this place. But I am locked here, but I am coincidentally also out of cakes. So... I think we're going to do a little prison break and uh, sneak out of the Winter Todd prison for just a little bit. Just to grab some food and then, I don't know, I think we've already come halfway, maybe we will push for 99. Look at all these supply crates, that's beautiful. Why is there a cake here? Let me get, <laughs> let me get that out. And just to prove that I'm not lying, yes, see, three cakes. Let's go get some more. Ah, oh, it feels good to be free. I hope the knights don't recognize me and drag me back there. I don't think I showed this in the first episode. Uh, if anyone that's not aware, especially the newer players, you can actually stand directly under the baker here and steal the cakes and you won't ever get interrupted by the guards. So you can just fill up a full inventory easily. Another cheeky little diversion. I can't remember the last time I did this random event. I think Jagex is trying to tell me something. That I'm going to be going straight back in the cage soon. Ah oh well. Freedom was good while it lasted. Sneaky little 30 thieving. So I stole about 180 more cakes. Which is similar to what I had the first time I went to Winter Todd. That should comfortably get us to level 99 if I, if I can survive that long mentally. Uh, let's go back there I guess. Well, whilst I go back to prison to mentally torture myself, you guys can catch up on the rest of the series at the playlist in the description down below or the video on screen. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you did. And I will see you one in the next one, if I survive. Have a good one, guys. See ya.